So we started this little webcam business from my apartment and it just grew and grew and grew. And it got to the point where at one point I had 75 women working for me in four locations. Damn. And I was doing $600,000 a month from webcam. So this is in the UK. You this started is in the UK. Right? Uh-huh. This is in the UK. So, but this leads into the story of why I moved to Romania. So mm-hmm. at the height of my webcam pin pin, I think I'm the king of the world, right? I have all these women, da, da, da. But the problem is my first two girls who worked for me worked for me because they loved me. Mm-hmm. I love this man. Right. I am with this man. We're a team. He's going to take me from the ghetto to the hotel suites. <laughs> together but then once once you get bigger you're still hiring girls who don't love you they're in it for the money mm-hmm. so i had a whole bunch of girls working for me who weren't really about it and then i had one girl and she got too drunk one day and she threw up in my apartment i told her to clean up she refused to clean up start being an idiot so i took her stuff throughout the window because it's like it's about that with women you know, I'm a, you never hit a girl right can't yeah. do that but if we if, learned that the hard way last yeah, week yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can't but if all the other girls see of me be disrespected yeah. They're gonna lose respect for the facts, right? Yep. So when she's like, "I ain't cleaning that up," you get that. So I was like, "Look, you're, I don't care." And she was my biggest earning girl. She made me on her own maybe twenty five thousand dollars a month. Oh Damn. shit! So I didn't want to fire her, and she knew I didn't want to fire her, which is more reason why I had to fire her ass. <laughs> so I, I was like, "All right, cool. You want to be a gangster? Right? You're a gangster. Got her shit. I got like high up. We're like high up, like here, just out the window. So <laughs> out the window. Got her by her two arms and marched her out the door. Locked the door. End of it." She starts texting me, texting me, you owe me my last month's wages, you owe me my money, give me my money. Then I text her back, I ain't paying you nothing, you threw up my blah, 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 blah. She went to the police. Oh, shit. And told the police I hit her when I didn't. Whoa. So it's five in the morning, and this is about four months later. Five in the morning, four months later, I'm laying in bed. Yeah, uh, let me make a point about that uh, right there. Now, what Tate said he done... All he did was have the boundaries. He's the guy in charge. He's hiring this female. And she's getting an ego boost by being the number one earner. And she's acting a certain way in front of other women. Now, women always respond to what the crowd is saying, whether that is an insane opinion or whether that is a sane opinion. If it's a popular opinion, they react to that. So what he's saying is he had to have that boundary and enforce that boundary, no matter if it cost him money, because in the long run, it would have cost him more money if this belligerent female had, would have continued to be disrespectful because the other females would have aped her behavior. So he marched her out the door, told her, get the fuck out. She had a bruised ego. She was mad that she got fired and she couldn't get back at him in any other way because um, sex wouldn't work. He, or, he already had all those other women. She couldn't um, withhold sex from him or dump him because it wasn't that type of relationship. She was his employee. So what did she do? She did what most women in the West do. They get another man. And when I talk about another man, I'm not talking about brother or father. I'm talking about the government and the police to enforce revenge for them. It's a common thing. And because of the way this society is, they know they can get away with it. It's a total abuse of uh, power and it's a total abuse of any type of safety the authorities provide and if it can happen to a guy like Tate this multi-million dollar entrepreneur it can happen to anyone and I think more guys that are richer that have a public profile that are more successful with women are uh, prone to false accusations more so than your average Joe who married the first chick that uh, he had sex with or your um, conditioned simp guy that doesn't get any play from women. He's just sitting, taking in the social media and the news, thinking that's what it is. Uh, that's what reality is. When it's a, a load of BS and they, they are getting played um, by the same women. If the women aren't me too new to play you, they're going to um, take your money because you're simping to play you. That's all I wanted to say about that, but it was a great point to made there. Yeah, I would say this is just shocking that even as a man who's wealthy, and who's able to get, who's got his um, stuff together, you still have to worry about the fact that some girl, if she's unhappy about the fact that you have boundaries, about the fact that you can put her in her place, is going to go to the police and basically falsely accuse you of something you haven't done. So let's say, let's say if he had done something, then that would be obviously disgusting, that would be shocking. But the fact that he hasn't done anything, showed her some respect and told her, leave my property you don't belong here she decides to hey i'm gonna go to the police lie about this so that i can get my revenge and feel superior to the person so it's just um this this is just disgusting it just makes no sense yep. law 
would be impartial, would, would actually look at the evidence, look at um, what is going on. But it, it's not the case. It's believe women first, and then they look at what's going on, and then they look at the evidence, and then they actually try and do their job. So that's, yep. that's my piece. Ridiculous. Girl here, girl here. <laughs> Chilling, living the life. And I heard the door, boom, 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 boom. And I don't know how I knew. I just knew it was police. The way they knocked that door. I was yeah. like, if you're going to rob me, you kick the door in. Or you, you this shit is wrong. And, and as soon as I heard that noise, I just paused for a second. I heard police. And I was like, ah, man. <laughs> I was like, ah. But I didn't know what it was for, right? But I, I, there's a few things I can't say in the podcast. I've done, I've lived a varied life, right? I've done some things when I had to pay the bills. Right. So I was a bit like, ah, oh, what's this going to be? So I like flush my phone down the toilet quickly. <laughs> like, shit, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> so I'm trying to hide shit. I'm looking around, what do I have to hide? Eventually the door comes off the hinges. Boom, police bust in. Yeah. Fully armored helmet, boom. The guy in the back had a clipboard of me standing there after one of my fights with a world title belt and they and they sent like the, the big man squad like the oh, crazy yeah, man yeah, yeah. So all the officers were like six six yeah the big boys came damn they sent all, they sent all the niggas to get you yeah, yeah. The they, they, they sent the big boys <laughs> i'm standing there like okay well, let's see. so i was like who are you and they're like you're under arrest for a suspicion of assault of this dumb hoe and i'm like <laughs> wait is like, it dumb hoe <laughs> they didn't but i'm gonna protect her <laughs> yeah let me make a point right so um, you see how Tate was smart. He's not saying he was doing anything untoward, but he's lived a life. He's a guy that doesn't live on the grid. Somewhat on the grid because you can't get away from it, but he took the right precautions because he's smart. He knows that when they turn up over some dumb BS, they're going to try and get you for something. Whatever it is, whatever you have going on in your house, they're going to try and get you for something. So what he done, he took a precaution and he still um, took some sort of action against him, as you hear uh, when the video goes on. And they sent in the squad. Now he has a cage fighter or a, a, a Muay Thai guy or a kickboxing guy. And they sent in a squad. You'd think this guy had done some sort of terrorism crime. Even if he had done what he had done, I'm not condoning anyone assaulting anyone, whether that be man assaulting man or woman assaulting man or man assaulting woman. I'm just saying that it's not the crime of the century. Not there was there wasn't any um bodily harm or scarring. It didn't actually happen, but even if it had happened, you would say, Oh, he's used a weapon or whatever else, then that might warrant a little bit more heavy-handed policing. But the way they turned up, um, Maybe they thought he's a cage fighter is going to try and take people out. But this is in the UK. This isn't the US. The police only carry guns in the UK if it's some sort of gun or bomb situation. That's not what's going down. Or that's what wasn't going down with him. A chick said, falsely accused him that he had assaulted her. Um, mildly assaulted her, which she didn't. Uh, a month prior. And then she made a complaint months later. And they turned up like that. That's that's how crazy it is. Yeah, I've never, I've never experienced this. Uh, thank God. Uh, but the fact that they sent a squad, not even like one guy, not even two guys at least, to go and talk to him and see what's going on. Why did this person make this um, accusation about you? They sent a squad to arrest this man because he was a man. Had they sent this same, uh, they would have not sent this same squad to a woman's house to arrest the women they would have sent maybe one person or even a woman to go and arrest the person and tell her we need you at the station the yeah or oh, they may have not have even arrested her they may have just like um either not even looked into the the claim or they would have sent someone to talk to her to mm -hmm. try and make a counterclaim against the guy to find out why did you arrest well, oh sorry why did you assault him and then if she gave a reason, they would have turned into some sort of coercive control. Now, it sounds like we're, we're coming up with reasons why the police do this, that, and the other, but it's not. If um, It's good that women have protection in Western countries. That's not what we are disputing here. That's good. Everyone should, but men don't. Men don't. If a woman says something about a man, men should have the same protection, but also there are women who will abuse that. It's human nature. You always get groups, whether that be a racial group, any racial group, every racial group, or a gender group, male or female. That's the only ones I see, to be honest with you. Um, you always get corruption and dishonest people. And given 
this type of leeway to people or to women to bend the law and for men to be abused by the law is insanity. But that's the uh, society that we live in. That's true. I've always taken this quote um, from something I'd seen uh, that um, absolute power corrupts. So it makes sense that if you give the females all the power in terms of the law and in terms of being able to accuse a certain person, they're always going to abuse it. It's always going to happen. Uh, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I didn't touch that gum hole. Yeah. And uh, the police were like, well, look, don't talk to us. We just have to bring you in, talk to the investigator. So I went to the investigator. They kept me in a cell for a day and a half. They sent officers to raid my house, took all my electronics, took all my phones, all my laptops, went through my Damn. entire personal life, found 11 new things to raise charges against me for. It's unrelated because the original case got dropped. Because she had no evidence that she was lying. Because all the other girls in the house went to all my house. She's lying. Yeah, right. So we're like, ah, okay, but we've been through his life. He has a Lambo and a bunch of pussy and he's enjoying himself. And that's not allowed in the Western world. Yeah. So we've been through his life and we found 11 new reasons to raise crap against him. Mm -hmm. So I had 11 new charges, blah, blah, blah. And I just woke up one day and said, I cannot live in this kind of, I will not live under a government that will do this to me when I've done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave and go somewhere. And by coincidence, I had a fight coming up in Romania. So I went and fought in Romania. And I thought, you know what? I'll hang around here for a few months. Mm. And then, boom, five years later, I'm, I'm still there. So that's that's the long, buried story of how I ended up in Romania. See, we're, we're laughing about it, but just the power of one girl that is describing... Yeah, let me come in here. Um, so, he said there was no evidence. The police discovered that she was lying, but they went into his house and took his electronics and made up BS charges because of his profile and because of how masculine he is and how he conducts himself online. Tate is a G. Tate is a man's man. Tate is a fighter's fighter. I mean, he does his market and he does whatever else. Business guy, you've got to um, get your money. So people agree with that or disagree with that. That's not the issue here. What we're talking about is what actually happened with the false accusations. So this fella, it is proven that the actual initial complaint that was made against him was false. It was a lie. The police had no evidence. So they made up different charges. Maybe a text message to someone, maybe some sort of business dealings he had going on online. Whatever it was, it is not the, the, the complaint. Those charges got dropped as well. That's a fact because they didn't, they couldn't be sustained in a court. This happened in England. If it happened in Scotland, he probably would have got convicted and would have had to appeal and then won the appeal. It's just Scotland is worse than England. I think Ireland is catching up with Scotland also with the insanity of making these woke social justice issues into laws, not just cancelling on uh, social media. They are trying to make these SJW nonsense issues into law. And that's the, the UK police for you. They are not about justice. These people are brainwashed already. It's very dangerous to allow someone into a police force or some sort of court setting, some sort of professional role in a court setting, and they have these types of beliefs. They should be screened, but the people that would be doing the screening would be the same also. Everybody wants to just fit in, and some of them aren't even corrupt. They're just idiots. They believe everything they see online. There's no sort of um, religious or philosophical or... Uh, stoic uh, philosophies that they read about. They're more about we're getting their um, moral stance from social media and from television, which are two of the most corrupt institutes out there at the moment. They love this um, division and backbiting and uh, causing controversy and stirring the pot. And they have an agenda, and the agenda is to make money. It's not this whole oh, conspiracy theory. It's very straightforward. They're in power. They make money. The saps that pay them the money, they've got to keep in some sort of feedback loop where they keep giving them the money. And um, they've got to keep men and women at each other's throats. And they've got to give the people that are corrupt, more so the general public of females in the West, um, and the, their male simps or male allies if you like allies is just such a dumb word i mean they're getting played so they're not really allies they're more weapon boys they've got to keep them on the hook and uh it's crazy that this man had to stay in a police cell he was treated like an animal 
and charged with things that weren't even part of the, the false complaint in the first place. And that's what happens. Now, Tate got out of it. Tate had the money to fight it. Uh, but a lot of guys don't. And I did say previously that this is a problem with celebrities and guys with high profiles. More so, yes, but it's happening to everyday guys. And it's happening so often you don't even hear about it. It's happening to people, everyday guys, women saying 40 years ago he'd done this to me or three years ago I was with him and he'd done this to me and it's mostly down to being bitter a relationship breaking down the guy not giving any money um, I'm not saying every man is innocent but there's a, a cultural shift now that this is how you get revenge if you're a female and uh, you know if uh, someone is like that that way inclined there is no honour uh, in their thinking they'll just make a false accusation and they know they'll get you i remember at one time i seen a female and a guy had said something untowards uh, to her not sexual but um just he was disrespectful and then she just she she turned her and said to me i'm going to accuse him of something and i had to say to her you can't do that that's out of order that's not what you should do to him for him doing that you should just say the same thing back to him but it's, it's an abuse of power and it is what it is. Phone call could ruin your whole life. Bro, it sounds good. Yeah, we laugh now and it's a joke yeah. now, right? But I was in a police cell looking at police time, yeah. right? I spent $450,000 on legal fees keeping my Damn. ass free. So even wow. though I was completely innocent of the original charge, even though the police said to me, yes, we know she lied. But now we've been through your entire personal life. We've got new reasons to mess with you. Let me tell you something. If you're watching this and you're a man, if the police forensically analyze your life, you've done something wrong. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you had a yard sale and didn't pay tax. It doesn't matter if you had a video while driving. You have done something. Yeah. And, and if they really want to get you, they're going to get you, right? Yeah. And, and because of who I am and my persona, and because they saw me living a particular lifestyle through my phone, they see me with like five naked bitches and shit. They're just like, we don't like this man. Right. We want him to go to jail. Yeah. So when people say there's no agenda against men, there was. I sat in the police station with two Yo, let me come in. So, I think one of the parts got muted out there because of the feedback with Tate was like the two officers that were interviewing him were females. Yeah. Like, he, he was, his comment was something like they were lesbian looking females. Um, I think he's just being a little bit tongue in cheek there, but they, they are feminists. Like, you've got these women angry grilling him, looking at him with this angry look because he's a playboy, he believes in um, having multiple relationships with women at the same time, being honest about it and upfront about it. He believes in only um, having attractive women, slim women, feminine women, doesn't want to uh, date overweight, purple, blue, green-haired uh, feminists with bad attitudes that are rude that uh, believe that they are men, um, that act like men. He doesn't want to do that. He is rich, he is successful, he is a man's man, he's a masculine guy, and they treated him in that way because they don't want him to be like that, and that's how that's how petty uh, even some of these police officers are. I think he said uh, dyke female officers, so he was basically saying that not because he's um, disrespecting lesbians, he's um, saying it to make a point that the police he was dealing with were feminists? Uh, just wanted to add in a little bit of a point. Um, when he mentioned that he'd been um, put in a police cell, I think you mentioned before as well as the fact that the interview with the two females, it's, what I'm trying to understand is, if they have no evidence, uh, okay, what are they questioning him on? Because if they're questioning him on something that's irrelevant to what he was accused of, then they have, there's no validity in them keeping them in a cell and then questioning them on things that's none of their business because they've not arrested them for this, that, and this. They've arrested them for the fact that somebody came to the police station and said, I'm accusing him of having done this, this, and that. So yeah. The that they've had to trump up these charges because they don't like the man, because the man is just being a guy. 
makes no sense because it shows that they're not looking to do their job, they're just looking to keep the man down, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And that's the corruption part of the, the, the police in the UK. They have to interview him once a complaint is made so they can try and trip him up in case he says something during the interview. And if he does, they can use that as evidence to uh, use for the complaint. But Tate is smart. He's not going to say nothing. Plus, he never done anything. Um, even if he did say something, it didn't substantiate to a charge because he didn't do anything. So I don't know what he said or didn't say in the interview room, but the fact of the matter is it got thrown out immediately. Now, the other charges, that's just them trying to get a conviction out of pettiness because this guy is who he is. No one likes a guy who's making his way through the world without being a weapon boy for the regime without being a weapon boy for the feminist SJW regime. A lot of these guys think they're honourable and they're paying women money on OnlyFans and they're simping heavy in the news and on Twitter. You're not honourable, you're a coward. You're sitting there trying to um, win a popularity contest and 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 gain favour from women who you think will sleep with you. But you have no chance of sleeping with them. You're on Twitter. You're not seeing these women in person. Put you in a nightclub or a situation like in a park with uh, three, four women. Um, you couldn't talk to them if you didn't have alcohol. And even if you did have alcohol, you wouldn't know what to do. You would just um, talk to them in a way where you want to be their friend. I'm not saying every woman that you talk to, you should try and sleep with her. I'm just saying um, it is. you have no... Um, clear idea of what's going on. The dynamic is when you're with women in a work setting or whatever, you, you're just chilling, you do what you got to do, you leave. Uh, if you're talking to women that you're attracted to, you try and have an end goal where, for that attraction. If it doesn't happen, you move on. It's not like we have to be friends with every woman or believe every woman and respect every woman. We don't have to do that with every man either. It's a matter of uh, just carrying yourself like a guy, mind your own business, and being successful and seeing women for what they are. Also, if you're attracted to a woman, having a woman, you don't have to get married. You don't have to have just one woman. You don't have to. I mean, if you want to do that, that's great. That's on you as well, if that's what you want to do. But you have to at least um, respect yourself as a man and respect other men and carry yourself in high regard rather than just making yourself some sort of sacrificial lamb to a feminist regime. And they don't care about you. They will step in your neck in a second. I leave. He said, "No, get up." Thirty, forty minutes. She's sit, standing there, looking dumb right. as hell. Like, "Oh, I'm not leaving unless you bring my shoes here." Long story short, we said no. Yeah, we said no. My put, put her stuff aside. Like, you know how you put yeah. her stuff aside? I didn't even throw. I put it yeah. nicely. I should have done Andrew yeah. take. Like, yeah. she, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Fix it up. Put stuff aside. We're recording the whole thing. Yeah. She says, uh, "Hey, you know what? If you don't bring my shoes here, uh, I'm not leaving." Blah blah blah. We call security. Security brings her stuff, escorts her out, yeah. and we know. We go about a day, I'm, I'm, I'm at a club, he's home chilling uh, with a chick. Next thing you know, right, we, uh, I get a phone call from, from uh, Myron. Hey, the, the police are here. I'm like, what? For what? Like, I'm in the club with this chick. Like, I'm partying and lit. All, all I know is police are there because of what this girl said. Yep. So she called. She made an allegation that we stole 1700 bucks. From her purse that we put outside, 1700 bucks. Now, Andrew, you've seen the studio, right? <clears throat> Why would we need to steal money from a girl? They, they right? just lied. Just lied. They... Right, this is a great point now fresh and fit are coming up they're doing really well podcast is so successful god bless them much power to them wish them more success we need guys like that putting this out there they sometimes the show is a little bit um crazy in the way where it gives a lot of dummies uh thoughties and ig and only fans women um a mouthpiece but it also on the, on the flip side shows how idiotic they are the point fresh made there was that i seen that show or a snippet of that show where they told the women to leave and the woman wouldn't leave because her ego was bruised again because she was getting kicked out you know what women are like they're petty especially these thoughties they think that every man should bow to them and when guys don't and they're disrespectful they tell them to leave their egos get hurt the pettiness of this is they came on fresh and fit show chasing clout and once they get kicked off, they look like idiots. So what do they do? Um, they try and get revenge again by calling the police. And the monetary compensation is a massive incentive for females that make false accusations, especially of assaults and the, the word that rhymes with grape in the Me Too movement. 
I know in the UK there's up to twenty thousand pounds, maybe even thirty thousand pounds in England, uh, compensation available for this. So that's a heavy amount of money for a broke person, for a broke female. It's nothing in the grand scheme of things. That that is a small amount of money, um, but for these um, welfare and benefit type of people that do this, the, these um, consumerism type of people who spend everything they get in a second, that is that's a, a, a significant amount of money, even though it's nothing. Um, the revenge aspect of it, she accused Fresh and Fit of stealing money, $1,700 or whatever the amount was, is petty. Uh, they came on trying to get attention. They, try, they came on trying to promote their IGs and their OnlyFans and whatever else, but they acted like idiots because they were drunk and because they're morons. They believe in this feminist um, indoctrination BS in the West. You don't have this in the Middle East. They're prospering. They have a lot of money. There's a lot of first world countries that have it in Russia. They don't condone that in China. These are all thriving nations. But then you, the nations in, in Europe um, that are dipping and going down, especially the UK and the USA, which is not in Europe, but um, it's a Western nation, Australia, it's um it's rife in these countries and it is gonna cause a lot of problems for our future generations. It's causing a lot of problems for our current generation, but it's gonna continue in this um whole ball of BS. One thing I've learned from the Fresh and Fit podcast is that they definitely show you what girls are willing to do for attention because it's their show. They've invited you to their show. So come in there, show some respect, have some fun, yeah, and then go. But there's the fact that they come into those shows, expect all the attention, <laughs> uh, and then they act as if it's their show, which makes no sense. It's, yes, even, even if it's, we asked you to come because we want you there, it's still our show. We run the show. If we tell you to leave, yep. you leave. You don't need to yep. be here if you don't want to be here. But, but then... The fact, but then creating these lies, saying we, we stole from your purse or um, that we did this to you in our studio makes no sense because we've got the recording. They have the recording. So you have yeah. the proof, but yeah, they're still choosing to do this for the attention side of it. It's, it's just, yeah. that's the funny part. It's, not it's the entitlement. Part. It's yeah. the entitlement also because they're entitled um, because all these guys are simping hard for them on their IG pictures uh, or their OnlyFans. So they feel every guy is like that. And then they come on these shows thinking that they're, they're some sort of celebrity. The way they act, a guy wouldn't act like that with another guy because it's physical confrontation repercussions. If a man talks like that to another man, there is the threat of violence. You would go outside, you would throw hands, or you would just it would just happen there and then. So guys have this boundary because that's the way it's always been. Apart from the the um, the simps who do so behind closed doors that's why they do it because they have feminine energy they act like women they act they're online doing it they're doing it um so you can't see them you can't um the media does it like that as well it's cowardly the media are absolute cowards if you were ever to catch the media uh, face to face they, they wouldn't know how to act and they wouldn't be able they wouldn't be able to talk like that they wouldn't be talking like that and that's that's why they do it these women come on here thinking um they know they're not going to get any type of violence going down and that's why their mouths are so open and that's why they're shooting off at the mouth and that entitlement that they have and that's is great when they i know it's entertainment as well when they kick the, the, the chicks off but it's also great that they do it because it shows other guys don't condone that just because she's attractive or you feel like she's sassy or whatever else don't condone that kick her out there's plenty of attractive women that are not disrespectful they're harder to find but once you know what you're doing and you're not simping for them, you're not spending your money on uh, on them for no reason, save that money and only give your attention to women that deserve it and that are respectful, not these morons that are on OnlyFans and on IG. Females from coming forward in the case of genuine injustice. Yeah. They basically say, you can lie to us about anything, and even if we catch you lying, we won't do anything. Yes. I, I said, why are you not going to get this girl in trouble? She lied to you. She's wasted police time. Yeah. You just told me she lied. Oh, well, we're too busy investigating you for being sexy. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. But, and that's, that's the Western world now. So as a man, when you talk 
about things like you guys are teaching, like dating and stuff. Yeah. It's more than just I want to have girls. Right? Yeah. This is survival. Yeah. yeah. If you're a man and you're no good with women, you're either gonna end up divorce raped or in a jail cell. You need to be smooth. Yep. Yeah. You need to know what you're doing. Facts. Head to toe. Mm-hmm. This is not a joke, right? So, man, I, I've lived it. That's my version of a Me Too story, right? Yeah. I, I... Now that was a great point he made. The woman who falsely accused him, it was discovered that she was lying. Her charges that she made up were fabricated. She wasted police time. But there's no accountability from her and from the authorities. They don't hold her accountable either. They just let it go. There's numerous stories online about women who do things in in the form of false accusations. And they're never imprisoned for it and if they are punished it might be a fine it won't be the same punishment some of these accusations land guys in jail for years eight years six years ten years whatever and there's not the same um, punishment if there's any punishment at all and that's where it's dangerous you give them a monetary incentive and also if they get found out there's no perjury going on Uh, there is a perjury law but they don't um, enforce it not on females and there's also less of a sentence for females for the same crime that men do this is not equality you can't pick and choose equality that's what this whole feminist rubbish is they pick and choose it's like a, a grocery aisle they pick and choose the good stuff and uh, the things they have they are they're okay with these are the advantages they have they're okay with and they don't choose any of the hard stuff and they, they don't want men to measure up um, whether there is inequality for men, especially when it comes to courts. He talked about divorce court. He talked about um, the parental alienation side of it. He talked about just men getting done for crimes. He talked about Me Too. I'm not saying that every Me Too accusation is wrong, but I'm saying the majority of them now, there are there is corruption and they are getting twisted. Um, so yeah, it is, it is a great point that Tate made there. I was just um, I, I was gonna take your point in terms of um, the Me Too movement. I think you mentioned something about the perjury um, yep. laws and the fact that if a man this makes no sense because if a man were to go to court and lie or go to the police and lie, he would be arrested for a waste yep. of police time and would be yep. taken to court and then they'd be they'd write write him up. They'd be like, you have to go to jail for this amount of time because perjury law says you have to go to jail for this amount of time. But it's funny that if a woman can lie, because we've seen this in the news, um, in you see it in programs in, on the news that this woman lied in written papers, about this woman lied and basically we've just forgiven her because she um, she's a woman and she's vulnerable and this and that. But isn't that sexism? That's actual sexism. That's saying yep. that she's a woman because there's certain things that she's vulnerable to and because she can't do this and do that, we have to now treat her with kid gloves, which yep. is basically not seeing the person as someone that can take care of themselves. They're trying to baby the female, which makes no sense when w- women themselves say they want equality, but at the same time, when things turn to not go their way, they say, okay, now we don't want equality. We just want to be above men or to want things that are uh, more than what men have. Yeah, they don't want equality. They want supremacy. That is just them dressing up nicely. That is, that is just women or feminists in the West dressing up nicely. A lot of women who are not feminists, they know they have all the rights men have. They don't need uh, to shout about equality. There's no inequality. If there was inequality, they wouldn't even have a voice to shout. I mean, they shout louder than anyone else. So th- there is no inequality in the sexism that you speak of. Uh, whether that be them being sexist towards women in the way that they're treating them with kid gloves and thinking that they're not intelligent. They're, these these feminist SJW people, they don't care about the mistreatment of women or the mistreatment of men as long as they those women that are being mistreated are not feminist, they're okay with that. And if it's men being mistreated, they don't care as long as their agenda is being served because they are lazy, obese, unintelligent, not responsible, unaccountable idiots. And it was social media that allowed these morons to spread this worldwide. 
and influence so many people. And now these people that are on Twitter, look, the UK police is on Twitter. Um, the UK media is on Twitter. The media get their stories from Twitter. It used to be the media had their own stories. The media has always been corrupt, but there was always there was always a divider media if you were like certain political leanings or whatever else. Now it's just insanity. It's like a bunch of gossips in high school just talking nonsense, some of the stories that you hear um, from the media. But the point is, the police will always side with women, whether they are telling the truth or telling lies, especially in the UK and the USA and other Western nations. And the West find it very difficult to convict false accusers, if they even convict them at all. Um, it's desperate measures, and that's why he said he moved to Romania. If you don't want to be around this type of madness, and this won't happen to you if you're a guy that doesn't get women or doesn't uh, live a masculine life. You'll just be a back-breaking simp that gets whipped. It still might happen to you. There still might be some uh, ghastly, overweight, uh, multicolored hair feminist that you end up with that whips you and tells you to do what you got to do and then just uses you for a compensation claim or you might just be sitting um, in a situation where you're just simping for the rest of your life so it won't affect you but if you're a masculine guy who doesn't want to um, deal with women with a certain attitude in, in your country and you just want to deal with attractive women with a better attitude you should make your money in this country there's ways of making your money in this country and then move somewhere else um, to have that other type of lifestyle where you are um, living in a, a country that has common sense laws um, and that has men and women there with uh, uh, level headedness. Two years later, asking for a job. I was like, you idiot. Yeah, uh, like, uh, are, like, are you stupid? Nah, like, <laughs> nah, and here's the other thing, too. Like, yo, that girl made the allegation, but me and Trey were smarter than her. You know what I'm saying? We, we right before we took her back and gave her security, we recorded inside of it. Bro, nothing in there except for a shitty iPhone and, like, a vape or something. Like, bro, you're, you're broke. Get out of here. We're going to steal some money from Yep, Myron again took the right precautions, um, said that the chick was broke, a vape and an iPhone, that says it all. And he had to film it. They had security cameras. Well done. But why would they have to steal money from someone that they get on their show? These guys are smart. They're not going to get used. Uh, the woman had no money in her bag. She just wanted to get some money. The, the, the incentives here aren't even complicated like people are saying these are conspiracy theories and whatever no it's not it's basic corrupt human nature you want to gain you want to get ahead you want clout you want fame it's all the the, the bad parts of your human nature out of sync uh, and that's all it is yeah when you said the bad parts it's basically greed vanity <laughs> yeah um, all the stuff that that in terms of as a person uh, makes you greed isn't bad but too much greed is a little bit it's evil i would say it's evil vanity is not yep. bad but too much vanity is evil so it, yep. it's, it's just good that these guys are smart enough to know we gotta record this we've got to make sure we've got this as evidence that way if things were to kick off or if the police were to be at our door hey look here's the evidence we've done nothing wrong we've got the proof um so leave us alone so it's just smart with them to do so yeah Toxic masculinity is a term that was invented by women nobody wants to fuck <laughs> to describe the men that the women do want to fuck. The women who are bigger and jealous, trying to insult and demonize men for being natural to their instinct. I don't want to rant too much. Right? No, no, I don't want to rant. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The world we live in today tries very, very hard to refuse a man his natural instincts as a man. Yep. And this is done on purpose. This is not done on accident. There's no war on men on accident. Men are the ones who start revolutions. If you look at any revolution in history, it was the men who were on the street and started that revolution. If you want to control a populace, the first thing you do is control the men. When you went, when the Romans went and conquered Sparta, they killed all the men, all the young boys, all the fighting age males. When you're left with nothing but females, you can conquer and control a society. We're living in a world right now where there's supposedly some virus and you have to stay in your house with a mask on and everyone's complying like cowards. And the reason is, is because they've destroyed the masculine narrative. You would have told men 100 years ago, we're going to take your business away. We're going to bankrupt you and they're going to lock you in your house. Every single man would have stood up and said, what? Who are you? You listen to 
to us. The people who are in charge of the world want to control the population. The easiest way to do that is to remove the warriors from the populace. Thanks. That's all it's about. So when men try and act in a masculine way, possibly masculine, they demonize us. And then another way they do is they try and shame us. Shame is another tactic. Oh, Andrew, when are you going to grow up and stop fucking all that hot pussy? <laughs> He nailed it. That is the whole basis of this false accusation, Me Too movement, social justice, BLM, all the the trash, uh, socialist, um, not communist, my bad, communist movements going on at the moment. Socialism promotes masculinity, competition, getting ahead best man for the job, best person for the job, regardless of colour or gender. Whereas these people are trying to force um, all sorts of agendas on you, all sorts of types of demographics on you. History is what it is. There's been bad things that happened in history. We're not talking about that. That is not a valid argument. We're in this day and age. We all privilege from being in the West, no matter what colour you are or what background you are or what gender you are. We all privilege from being here. Like the people that aren't, privileged are the people in those countries that are starving, the third world countries and the second world countries, and that's all colours of people also. I'm not going to go into the whole race thing, but he's right, it's, it's about uh, demonising men and masculinity, shaming men and masculinity, and if you fall for it, you're controlled, that's how you control men, so the, the, there's these guys who don't know what's going on, they don't know why they think the way they think, they don't know what they're doing with women, and they don't know how to be men, they don't have positive male role models, because the male role models that they have are either beta males or they're simps, or they, they also didn't know the same way these guys didn't know, but more so today, the again through social media, the conditioning is insane, it is totally insane, um, they're, they're using women because they're sheep, like he said, who follow popular opinions, no matter how uh, damning they are. Uh, they follow marketing, they follow consumerism, and these men are becoming uh, simps with no balls uh, because they don't know what they're doing. And that's the majority, that's 80% of men. And some of these guys aren't just uh, saps that won't fight you. Some of these guys will fight you to the death. Some of these guys can be dangerous. They can be, they, and again, they're in positions in the police and um, other legal faculties and educational faculties they're everywhere they are logical fools and deep down they just want approval from women and they think this is the way to get it they think identifying with the feminine makes them more attractive to the feminine which is not true they should identify with their masculine traits which is what women find attractive uh, and when women identify with a feminine traits that is very attractive to a guy you put any even if you get a conditioned simp, you put a very feminine, beautiful woman in front of him in a conversation, he'll be attracted to her. If you put a very feminine, beautiful woman with a guy that's quite masculine and grounded and is a, is a man's man, she'll be attracted to him. A bit of a rebel, she'll be attracted to him. That's just basic biology. This isn't about trying to change things through language and trying to police thoughts and like trying to um, ram square pegs at a triangular holes it's, that's not what it's about that's what these people are trying to do through social media and everything else now will this have an effect maybe psychologically in the next hundred years yes it will because it's having an effect right now and will it shape our future generations yes it will but again there's hardwiring from thousands of years that you just can't override and that's what they're trying to do there's guys that are running things maybe um, people that are making a lot of money from this consumerism stuff that know what it is and they're just twisting it so they can do what they have to do to make more money and that's what it comes down to making money is not a bad thing it's a great thing it's a good thing you need it you need those tokens to get by in the world it is it is a load of rubbish fiat money is a load of rubbish but it's what people use so you it's nothing wrong with that i'm not demonizing making money i'm just saying that the motive behind this is getting ahead and the idiots that fall for this they're they're pushing this agenda for the guys that want to be pushed it and the guys don't even have to make an effort. They don't even have to, it's just like the whole, he talked about masks. No one had to police masks. You were policed by the public to put on masks, almost um, doing the, the dirty work for whoever wanted that done for them. I'm not going to get into that either. Um, you make a good point about um, the, the ones that are making money from this. 
it's just ironic that the ones at the top are actually living more of the um, crimson pill lifestyle compared to the ones who have to follow the the follow the female. They have to uh, basically act on the fact that um, the female is always right, believe all women, and um, trust all women. Whereas the ones who are the ones making the law, the ones who are the ones who um, profit from men being ignorant, ignorant men not knowing about female nature, men not knowing about the fact that things are against them, are the ones who are living the crimson life. So they're doing what they want and profiting from the fact that men are at a disadvantage because of uh, feminism. Yeah. Who hurts you? Yeah, who hurts you? Who yeah. hurt your feelings? I'm enjoying my life, right? I'm enjoying my life. Like, and, and, and I enjoy the company. I'm not saying I can't be loyal if I have a girlfriend, of course. But also, if I'm single and I don't want to be loyal, I'm a full-grown man. I can make my own choices, right? Yeah. Why should I be demonized or shamed for that? But they don't want that. They want men. We are the backbone of every economy. Facts. They want us to be worker ants. Facts. They want us to be semi-depressed with no fighting spirit to resist against. Right. Before we sign off, I just want to big up Tate for saying what he said and for talking about this because a lot of guys would want to brush us under the carpet and move on from it. That's bravery and that's true manhood. Saying that this happened in this era, a lot of guys would pretend like... Um, they don't have desires towards women, or if this did happen to them, they would shy away from it. Um, big up to him, big up to the work uh, Fresh and Fit are doing. I know they're getting their money and whatever else. They'd be stupid not to. They'd be stupid to do this for free. People calling them this, that, and next thing. They are fools. They're whipping boys also. Um, not Fresh and Fit, the people that are criticising these guys. No one's perfect. Crimson Capsule stuff isn't 100%. I'd say it's about 80-85%. Um, but this is why mainstream society, governments, and police hate the manosphere. He just said it, worker ants, and this is why the agenda, the the feminist agenda, is disgusting. Tyranny. They want us paying taxes as tax slaves in a sexless marriage with kids who don't respect us. No one talks about male depression. Nobody cares if the men are miserable. Nobody cares. As long as we pay our taxes and we don't divorce her because we're scared of losing... One point for me as well is that he's right when he said that nobody actually cares that men are miserable. Or that yep. depression is what kills a lot of men. It's all they care about is the fact that, uh, well, the women are happy and uh, that's it. That's all they care about. Facts. Who's in the house? And we continue to raise those kids and sit there while she refuses to give you a blowjob more than once a year. That's all the government wants from men. Yep. That's all they want from us. That's it. And that's why toxic masculine, masculine or toxic masculinity was coined. It was another weapon. A weapon against your natural instinct as a man to rebel. That's what it's all about. Bro, don't come on.